programmers, we're finishing up our Connect 4 game and we've done the diagonals and now we need to figure out how to detect a wind condition in a horizontal and a vertical. I'll start with the horizontal and so if we look at these four positions that would be four in a row, if we have the same type of piece in all of these in a row, then somebody's won. So I am in the same row. I did it for row five, but the same thing would be true for four, three, two, one, and zero. So we'll need to go through a loop where we're looking at each of the different rows, and then we're gonna check, are there four in a row where the uh, row position has the same value, but the column is increasing by one each time? So if we think of which positions could be the beginning of a four in a row, you know, this first position could be the beginning of a four in a row, the second position could be four in a row, third could be four in a row, the fourth could be four in a row, but after that, if you're starting at position five, four, there is not room to make a four in a row without going off the board. So I'm going to have two for loops, one that goes from 0 to 5, and that's my rows that I'm checking, and another that's talking about the columns that's starting at 0 and stopping at 3. So when we look back at the code that we'd created, I had left some functions blank that the the horizontal wind detection and the vertical wind condition were blank. The way to solve those is similar to what we've done with the diagonals that we've got the two for loops. So for the horizontal wind conditions, I said that my rows were going to go from 0 to the number of rows. And then my columns, I want to start at 0 and I'm going to stop checking when I get to the number three, so with the for loop we want to go one past that. And now, similar to what we did with the diagonal when, I'm going to see whether or not the, the board um, item is greater than zero, because zero meant nobody's gone there yet, and a one means it's the first player, and a two means it's the second player that went there. So I, I can pretty much just copy and paste what I had done with my diagonals and do those in this for loop. So if the position that we're looking at is not a zero and our board looks like this where the zero means nobody's gone there yet, a one would mean that the first player's gone there, a two is the second player's gone there. So if it's greater than a zero and then here's where my row is actually going to need to stay the same unlike the diagonal, this time the row is going to stay the same and the column is going to go our starting position and then we're going to go up each time. So if that was true, then this player won and we have a winning condition. So let's test that out. I'll go ahead and run the program. Trying out the uh, horizontal win condition, I'm going to have player one start in position one and then player two is just going to always Oh, that's not what I meant to do. Um, I'm going to have player one go in position two, um, player two, maybe position three. So I'm going to let player two go for the win here. As soon as I get four in a row for this player, two, three, four, five. And yep, player two won. So we tested that out. The vertical win condition is not much different than the horizontal win condition. So let's think about it. We are going to have a vertical win condition in any of the different uh, columns from 0 to 6. So we'll check 0 through 6 in a for loop for all the possible columns. And then if we're looking at the different rows that would make up the vertical win condition, we're going to keep going up by 1 when we're talking about the index for the row. And if you're looking at the beginning of what could be four in a row vertically, the last three rows are out because if you were to have one, two, three, four in a row vertically, um, it cannot start on row three. So we would have our other loop going from zero to two. So let's add that to the code. Again, I've got very similar checks to what I did for the horizontal and for the diagonal. and we're just going to adjust things a little bit so we said that our row our rows that we're interested in looking at are only zero to two so i'll, I'll go one past that when i'm doing the for loop and then the columns any of these columns could be um could be um 
a uh, uh, beginning of a four in a row vertically. So I have put at the beginning of this code a uh, variable number of columns. So I'm going to use that in my loop, just like I use number of rows in the, some of the other loops. So number of columns. And then we'll make sure that the piece we're looking at, the position of the board we're looking at isn't zero, which means it's blank. And this time, the row is going to go up one each time. And the column will stay the same. So first I'll adjust the row, and then I'll make sure that the column is not getting adjusted each time. All right, all that's left is to test this out, and I'd recommend thoroughly testing like all the possible win conditions. It's possible I made a typo somewhere, hopefully not though. Let's, uh, we tested the horizontal, let's test the vertical. So I'll start position one, two, and one of these players is gonna win. I'm aiming for player one to win, and yet we did detect that win. All right, so I hope you enjoyed using Python for Connect4.